G'day, everybody. Thanks, Coach. We'll start with Douglas. Douglas. Um, it, it's still obviously fresh in your minds. It's only been two days, but reflecting back on what you guys did this year, it's the first year of hopefully a sustained run to be in the finals and win some. What do you take away from this season? A lot, quite honest. Um, you know, obviously we're you know obviously we're still disappointed with how it ended, but just to get to a final, it's not easy. This is our first year together. Um, I think it took Vegas a few years to get to where we were. Um, but, you know, we, we grew as a team a lot from day one to whatever day we just finished. Um, things obviously we know we can still get better, but I, um, overall just really proud of the group and how they come together, how coachable, how they bought in to what we wanted to do. And um, they're just wonderful human beings. And, you know, it's going to be a long off-season as we prepared for the, the new season, but it should give us a lot of um, confidence to what the, that we want to – and motivation to build on what we did – we started this year. Is there anything you learned um, about your group on Wednesday night that you maybe didn't already know? Learn? Yeah. Okay. Um, you know, no, it just didn't go our way, really. You know, that's basketball and, um, you yeah, know, we talked about mindset. I, I, I wish Chelsea Gray played, to be quite honest. Um, but she didn't and – uh, the players fight. That's always the most dangerous games, being a part of way too many. That's just how it is. And, you know, they played their best game and we didn't play our best game. And the result, you know, showed in a very close loss for us. So it's a, it's another experience that we can um, have in our back pocket as we move forward if it ever happens again. Sandy, a couple here. Um, first, I uh, we spoke to Jonathan about what needs to improve next year, and he mentioned the bench and having reliable uh, backcourt defenders. I, I'm just curious, is that something that you see as an improvement from this team, and how important will it be to you in 2024 to, to have a bench that can relieve Stewie and Sloot? Yeah, look, I think yeah, that's always important. I mean, it doesn't bother Vegas at all, but, you know, we're going to rely, you know, your starters, but you need a reliable bench. And we had a reliable bench. I'm not saying they weren't, definitely. But, you know, quite honest, you know, Jonathan's a GM. I haven't put a lot of thought into the, this, what we need, but we need to get better in a lot of different areas. And defensively is one of them, definitely. We've got... Um, you know, it's times we're a great defensive team and other times we just make sure, you know, need the toughness because um, this is a very athletic and there's very skilled, the best players in the world. So, um, but then it's bringing the right people that complement the group that we have and, um, you know, I'll start that process. JK is obviously already already on it. Um, we'll have those discussions over the next month and um, – but what it, regardless, like I'm excited, I'm proud of all this group, even the bench, they were so professional this year and they worked really hard and I know they didn't always get their opportunities but that's in a new team, you're just trying to find the right chemistry and, um, but I still believe in them and, you know, more time together we could probably get better and better. And, and also um, I just wanted to get your response to something that was said by Kelsey Plum. Um, she sort of was comparing both of your teams and, and she sort of, she called you guys not a team. Um, she said, they're really good individual players, but they don't care about each other. And you can tell in those moments they revert back to individual basketball. I'm just curious what your thoughts are on that. I haven't looked at much social media. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't even think I should comment because we know it's not true. But, you know, if Kelsey sees that, that's for them. It's we know what's happening in our locker room. Um, I think this this team has grown really close together in such a short period of time, and you know we've learnt a lot along the way. But no, I don't, I not one second believe what Kelsey's just said because it's wrong. It's not true. Hey, Coach Andy. Good morning. Um, I know uh, during this series, a lot of pressure was on the players, but for you as a coach, what has the last 24 hours been like? Have you been able to rewatch the game and would you have done anything differently? I haven't rewatched the game. No, I probably won't for months. Um, well, it's nothing I can do now, so I don't reflect 
or have you – I mean, I know things yeah, – we all could have done things better, you know what I mean? Um, but it doesn't matter now. So it's more about, okay, well, you know, it's a learning for all of us individually and collectively. It's just just didn't go our way. Um, so the last 24 hours, you know, for me really, I just try to stay distracted. <laughs> started packing my apartment, um, started, you know, focusing on something else that just didn't just put all my energy on to that game because it hurts. But that's sport, isn't it? Coach, thanks as always for your time. I wanted to ask you a little bit about um, looking ahead to the future. And we've I've talked so much to you about leadership, but I think that what what is a stark difference between if we look at the, the Aces team and, and this New York Liberty team, we've talked so much about how things were really by design and by committee, all voices heard. And I think that when Bill Ambeer was with the Aces, he – there's th that element to it, but there's also the keys were given to Asia Wilson as soon as she was drafted. You have some number one draft picks. You brought in Brianna Stewart. I'm thinking of what do you see as the, the future balance between perhaps Brianna Stewart and Sabrina Ionescu and, and being that uh, kind of focal leader um, on the court and, and being able to, to have that um, for the New York Liberty? Yeah, look, I, I think... Um, yeah, Asia got given the keys, but I think Chelsea drove the bus, to be quite honest. Um, you know, and that's usually because of the point guard's position and kind of player she is. And they're, uh, I think even for Vegas, they're all leaders at their own time. Alicia Clark coming off, you know, what she's done just complements it. You know, Candace came in, she's still going to lead. You're not going to put her in a box, you know, because uh, she's a great leader. Uh, we're no different. You know, um, Shuey came in. Yes, yeah, Shuey was a leader of this group, but I never put, you know, titles like her and Sloop were the ones, you know, the leader leaders, but I always encourage everyone, everyone has a voice here because um, I think that take, that's ownership, isn't it? If you, you've given them, it's a way to grow. Even Sabrina, Sabrina's a young player. She's going to, she is, you know, going to keep growing in that part of her game. But we didn't want anyone just to sit back and just to listen. It's, we're all a part of the journey together. Um, but, you know, and I think Stewie keeps getting better at leadership. Remember, she's one year post Sue Bird era. <laughs> so she has to, you know, she's learning how can I be a leader too now at that. She's a leader by her actions. Now it's a leader in a different way because Sue could do it all um, when you had a vocal one there. So I think that would be a part of the natural um, growth of all of these players. And, um, you know, we want to, we give them a lot of responsibility. You know, they're our main players, you know, um, Brianna, Sabrina, um, you know, Courtney in particular, but, you know, B just, we wanted her to be a leader there too. And then JJ, you saw how she grew throughout the playoffs too. Um, and that's a part of it. And then the bench, it's like, you know, you have strengths, you've got something to say, you say it. Um, and that's how, um, you know, we can have a vulnerable state uh, uh, environment and we can keep growing as a team. But I think they're all going to get better and better from the more experience being in leadership roles. Coach, good morning. Thank you for being here today, and thank you for your time all season. Um, wanted to ask, um, you take on, you took on this season one of the most desirable yet unenviable tasks in perhaps the history of the WNBA, leading this group forward. You accomplished many things this year, but not, but but fell short of the ultimate goal. But my question is basically, through this trying yet exhilarating time, what do you think you learned about yourself as a basketball coach and perhaps as a human being as well? Look, to be quite honest, I look back with just great, wonderful memories. You know, it's a privilege for me to lead, lead this team, to lead this organisation um, and do it, you know, not just me, but, you know, in the way that I feel that is best. Um, I have experience here, but I'm always someone that looks at myself in the mirror. How can I get better? Because I am, the, you know, the leader at the top that they're looking to and, you know, and that's my reflection in the off-season. But for me... It's, it's been one of the most enjoyable because there was a lot of pressure, but I don't feel it because I'm always focused on the process. Um, because if you felt, if you're just worried about those expectations, you wouldn't be free to just be and go through the learning experiences. And, um, you know, you guys after the game will always maybe, you know, you'll ask, okay, why didn't she, do, wouldn't, why didn't they play? Well, it's all a process. It's all, you know. There's a plan behind it. Not everyone knows the details of what's going on behind, who's injured, who's not injured. We don't divulge all information. 
Um, but for me, I always like, that's on me. I'll take all that because that's my role and I'm fine. I've learned to, to live with all that kind of stuff. But I think I can handle a lot, you know, I do, you know, in all different situations. And, um, of course, it wasn't always smooth sailing, but I, I enjoy the, the little air at times when we had little difficulties and trying to align them to put them back on the path. Um, but, yeah, every year is a, a year of growth. Um, just as a player, I was, I was always learning to uh, working to get better, and every year I'm, I'm going to get better as a as a coach too. And you know, I suppose when you have a new team, a part of it we're all learning each other. I've never coached some of these, and that takes time. And I thought as we got along, we kind of worked out what works best. And I think, you know, I wish we had more time because you know maybe the bench like how to work them in better too. You know, in certain situations and. Um, so that's what excites me as we move forward to have more time together to grow um, individuals but this team collectively and what we need to do so we're not here today and not playing in Vegas and, and not, you know, hopefully winning that first championship um, for New York. Appreciate your time. Thank you. We'll go to Fifi Miles and then finish on Zoom with Alexa. Hey, Coach, good morning. Thanks for being here. Just uh, piggybacking off a previous question, to say the season ended <clears throat> tough was understatement really, but are you – Kind of grateful that the team has gone through the fire, uh, through this postseason, through the finals, and like, were there moments in the finals in Game Four somewhere where you thought would have gone differently if they would have been in those tense moments with each other beforehand? Yeah, look, I mean, like I said, grateful to 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 make the final. You know, it's never a given. You know, even though the super team narrative that was at the start, um, if you've been in sports, you can't just put a team together and expect miracles. But we actually. Did a lot of miracles this year and I'm really proud of that. Um, they were very selfless in their approach. Um, it was always about the team. They were competitors. They were great teammates, you know, uh, and the joy, like, you know, Kelsey saying we're not a team, that's, you know, it's BS because we were. Um, but maybe they have more experience with each other so we're going to grow with, you know, with more time with each other because it's a new group. Um, but, yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I'm excited. And, and, and you're going through fire. That's how you grow, isn't it? We'll remember this, how it feels, how it all feels for us. Um, it's not great but still proud. we got to look back and be proud. We can be, you know, a little upset now but, well, okay. And uh, what went wrong, you know, the third quarter we had a lead of nine points and we came out rattled a little bit and played at their speed and, and then we just, you know, just settle in, settle in. And I think we just got a little, you know, maybe a little tight um, in that situation there. And, you know, I suppose that's – you always look back, oh, but how could have helped him a little bit more? And, okay, we've been in these situations before, but we grew. We had to fight through Washington. What a tough series that was. We had to fight through Connecticut. But that showed a lot of growth there. And this is another area we had lost a tough one in the game four and – you know, will it'll motivate us as we go forward. Hey, Sandy. Uh, at last year's exit interviews, you said there are some good free agents out there, and if we could get one or two, that would propel us even faster towards winning a championship. So your assessment there was was pretty yeah. spot on. Yeah. You're you're a lot closer to that goal than than a year ago now, but. Having gone through, like Fifi was asking about, some of some of the challenges to to get through those series and to make it to this point, what now? Even if you were to run this this team back, what do you think that you've learned and gained from getting so close to that 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 brink? Really, that we're close. We've beaten Vegas many times this year. Not one time. It wasn't a fluke. You know, they say first game you win, oh, it's a fluke. Second game you win. Oh shit! Okay, they're doing. They're pretty good. We went. We beat them three times, and we're close to beating. You know, another one. Um, it means that we're right there. So it's all the one percenters that we need to to do better. So it's not like reinvent the whole wheel. I think we're on the right track. I think we we play the right way, but we just got to do it better for longer periods of time when things are not going well. Um, but you can't win without talent in this league. And that's what we did. But now you have the talents putting all the right pieces together. Um, but continuity will help. So, you know, yeah, I'm sure there will be some changes because we have an Olympic year, but it's not going to be a whole makeover because, you know, and obviously we don't know about JJ yet, but, you know, hopefully she returns. And if not, we just, you know, we have to find the next best option. But um, hopefully we can run it back. 
We'll finish on Zoom with Alexa. Hi, Sandy. Um, it felt like for a lot of the finals we were talking about or hearing from you, stuff about like the mindset, the mental approach of your team, some of the intangibles like competing and grit. I think you just mentioned toughness earlier. So what I wanted to ask is do you think all those kind of intangibles when it comes to like the mental side of the game, toughness, grit, is that something that can only continue to grow when you look ahead to next year, once the team has more time together, like how are those things that maybe can even continue to develop um, from this experience, but then looking forward to your goals for the future? Yeah, look, and that's that's a great question. I did that, like, and, and why I said that earlier is because we came out and we didn't play to our identity. So you're saying why. And then you look at the mental part. Is it because we've beaten them, you know? Is it because, like, when we first came against Connecticut, we came out and got our butts kicked oh, my, we beat them 4-0 during this regular season. But you try and tell them, well, those four games, two of them were really hard and we should have probably lost one of them, you know, or maybe two. So, um, you know, complacency, you don't want to – complacency complacency steps in a little bit and that's what, you know, maybe they they don't think it is but subconsciously, you know, if you're beating someone, you kind of forget what the what the journey is like to get there and and I think mindset is a part of all athletes' career, isn't it? I know it was part of mine. Um, you know, I think I was a mentally tough player with all the experiences I went through but they weren't easy. They weren't easy at all. Some of them were really difficult but it helps you to get to the stage like, okay, I've been here what do I need to do? Breathe. I don't know. You know, breathe. There's certain things. I would slap my butt. Um, you know, it's certain things you get a trigger. It's a pattern interrupt to get you refocused because you can't miss opportunities. And sometimes it's not the physical, it's the mental. Um, and, you know, if, whether it was or not, um, you know, Alexa said, but it's always an area that we can continue to grow. And I think all professional athletes, it's a part of their journey. It's not the physical, it's everything. It's everything, the wellness, the psychological, the mental, everything is a part of being the best player that you can be. So, um, yeah, maybe that, that was a part of it. But, you know, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll, we won't, uh, we'll talk about that next year and we'll get locked in and, and, and making sure that we um, are the toughest team both um, physically and mentally.